Hello there, and welcome back to this Project in Enterprise Java course. So today we'll be, we'll be con continuing our voting system application. And last time we went over the very basics of setting up our connection to a database. Today we're going to be going over how we can utilize DDL or database language. Um, and we're actually not going to be, you know, utilizing it to a very large extent, but we're just going to be, you know, creating a very basic entity and then, you know, seeing how that translates into the database itself. So what table it creates essentially. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So let's go and actually now um, create a new package here. We're going to start to create an entity and we're going to see exactly how this auto DDL works. So uh, we're going to create, whoops, no, what am I, why am I creating an enum? I need to create a package. So we're going to create a new package here, and this package is going to be called um, uh, com uh, voting system dot entity. There we go. And now let's create a new class inside here. And this is class is actually going to be called citizen. Um, okay. Finish. There we go. Um, now our class citizen will have the annotation at table, um, and then let me actually let's go import it. Uh, let's import JavaX persistence. It's usually the best. And then the table, and then we're gonna have the table name as uh, citizens. Now there is some argument over um, whether when we create something like this. Whoops, what seems to be the problem? All right, name equals citizens. There we go. All right, so there is some arguments whether if you're creating something like a citizen or a person or a school table, whether you should call the table citizen or citizens or, you know, table or tables and so on. So personally, I prefer to use citizen since really we're not storing a citizen in the table. We're storing citizens, multiple citizens. So, yeah, you know, it's, well, you know, generally speaking, it's um not really wrong either way. All right, so now that we have our citizen, we can actually do at... Um, ID, okay, so this just adds an ID to our citizen, and we're going to see exactly how this works in a second here. We're also going to add at um, column name equals ID. All right, and then we're going to do um, private, whoops, nope, wrong place, private int ID, and actually, no, let's do long, it has to be long. There we go. So now let's go ahead and actually import ID. Um, and make sure you're consistent with where you're importing from. So with a lot of these, you're actually going to have, you can import it from either JavaX.Persistence or from Hibernate. So for example, with a column here, uh, or actually no, column itself is actually just JavaX Persistence uh, with table. Let me actually go and delete table. Um, you'll see here how you have import table JavaX Persistence and table Hibernate annotations. Use JavaX Persistence. It, it, it just, it, 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 it has the least amount of fuss associated with it. Okay, so now we have our citizen table. We will now do, uh, pr uh, we're actually, we'll actually now create a getter and setter for this. So we're going to generate getters and setters for ID. Okay, there we go. Then we're also going to do at column um, name equals, and then the name of this column will be citizen name. And again, you're going to see exactly what we're doing here in a second. I'll, I'll explain what exactly what's going on. Uh, whoops, nope, I did not need square brackets here. Um, now, in here, I'm going to do a private string name. All right, there we go. And now let's generate getters and setters for that. There we go. And finally, let's create a constructor for all of this. All right, and OK. All right, there we go. So now let's save this. Now, what's going to happen? So our Spring application, since we included Spring Data, um, yeah, Spring Data JPA, it's actually going to go ahead and take a look at, um, it's actually going to, this is sort of the magic of Spring. It's going to see that we have a um, package here that um, is a sub package of the package that our main class is in, so where we start our application. It's going to see, so here you see how we have a com idionics voting system dot entity. So this is a sub package. And inside here, it's going to see a citizen class. It's going to see the table a name, uh, the table annotation, the ID annotation, the column. And it'll, you know, put two and two together and understand that this is actually a entity. And so it'll create it inside our um, 
database. So let's go and run this. Let's see exactly what happens here. And you know, all right, Spring Boot. All right, and there we go. So it started up. Um, now, does it actually show the SQL? All right, so it doesn't show the SQL um, because we didn't set it to show SQL in theory. Yep, okay. But now, in theory, if we go to our MySQL, let's go to terminal, let's go to cd slash user slash local slash MySQL, and then cd slash bin. No, we're gonna do we're just gonna do slash bin. Sla I'm actually gonna take a look at this. I already forgot the exact the exact. There we go. Bin mysql u root p. And enter password. In my case, it's nothing. All right, there we go. So now we're gonna use um, use voting system. And now if we do um, so, let me actually make it a little bit bigger so you can see. There we go. If we do select all from citizens, you'll see we actually get empty set. So, I mean, I mean, we didn't actually insert anything, but if we do something like um, select all from, I don't know, pay, for example, we actually get table voting system dot hey doesn't exist. So that means that um, our um, JPA actually itself, well, actually, no, not, not, not JPA, or yeah, I guess JPA and Hibernate together, they essentially created the table for us. So we can actually right now do um, um, insert into citizens and then ID name values one Bob. Okay, so unknown column name and field list. What is the problem? So, oh, it's citizen name. There we go. That makes sense. Um, not name, it's going to be citizen name. There we go. And now if we do select all from uh, citizens, we get ID one, citizen name, Bob. So there we go. So we, we've effectively used JPA and Hibernate to effectively automatically configure our database as necessary. All right, and there we go. So that's it for this lesson. We actually went over an absolute ton today. So we installed MySQL, we got the database hooked up, um, we essentially figured out how DDL works, and we're going to take a look at, a little bit about how what other options we have. So here we have create drop. We can also have update. We have create. We have validate. So there we have a couple other options, and we're going to take a look at what the difference is. And uh, what's also important is that um, DDL it's pretty cool. You know, you don't have to configure a database, but it should not be trusted in production. So if you actually deploy your application, um, it's not it's not good. It's not good. You're gonna have problems. Um, I mean, I mean, not deploy it like run it. I mean, like deploy it like with with actual users using it, and it's actually like released sort of. It's not a good idea. Okay, so for homework, your job is to create another entity class. Um, right here under entity, we're gonna have citizen. We're also gonna have um, candidate as well. So candidate uh, for now, it, he will also just have an ID and a citizen name, and that's all. So anyway, um, thank you for tuning in into this Java Projects course. Um, I wish you luck with the homework, and uh, I'll see you next time. Till soon.